Hi everybody, today in the studio we have Will from Filthy Amplification. Round of applause ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks so, for having me on the show. Anytime. So we met about a week ago at the Birmingham Guitar Show. Yes. Right? And it was in, I found it really interesting. It's just a big wall of noise at an event like that. Yeah. It is, isn't it? It is, yeah. But the thing that really got me is um, uh, me and my dad who was with me, who's also a guitarist, and we were walking through, we were pretty tired by the end of the day, and Will sat at his booth with one of his amps, I think it might have been this one actually, and just played a chord, and we both just stopped and went, okay, and we just gravitated over straight away, and that sound so just cut right through, well it did. Yeah. It just cut right through that we both just went, hello. <laughs> Probably because I was louder than everybody else. <laughs> no. Well, that, that, uh... but that, that's the thing though, isn't it? Because volume isn't everything. No, it's not at all. And that's a big part, I think, of the amp designs that, that Will's done. This one is the Control Freak. Yeah, that's so, right, yeah. So Will does some very complicated amp designs, but also some very simple ones. Yeah. And this one is the simpler one, isn't it? Well, yeah, this is uh, the simplest one I've made so far, as far as the user's concerned, not necessarily, well, actually all my amps, as far as the electronics inside them, they're very simple designs. There's, I try and minimize the amount of components. They're all, all valve, all hand wired, uh, but I try to get rid of as many components as I can, because I see them as problems in the uh, circuit that just lose a little bit of touch sensitivity every time. So I, I'm trying to keep as much dynamics as I can and build that into the amp as well from the beginning. <laughs> Fair enough. Now, I being on the recording side of things, I can appreciate how it sounds, but in terms of the actual build, yeah. you just mentioned there that you're taking components out. Do you think other amp manufacturers put those in because they're expected to? Or? What it is, is um, when, when you make an amp, um, there's a lot of factors that keep the valves doing what they're doing just because you've got a, a certain valve doesn't mean it's going to sound a certain way it's the it's the components round the valve that make the difference to the tone uh, and how how that tube is biased um, and how it'll break up whether it'll break up at certain frequencies but not others um, uh, whether when it starts to break up it'll compress and everything uh, but there are a lot of components people put on in for electrical stability. So uh, to stop parasitic oscillation and things like this. So you're getting technical now, but uh, they have to be in an amp really to stop it going wild. When I tune my amps, I try and get them to be on the verge of that oscillation to keep the clean sustain high. So before it distorts, this amp's already got a lot of sustain compared to other clean sounding amps um but as it as it distorts it gets even more sustain you know but uh part of that is the fact that i i tune it electrically so it's it's about to go crazy and start um uh destroying itself <laughs> you know but uh but not quite i mean i i have some experience again on the recording side mic preamps are a very similar thing to this that like you know, the most popular ones, the Neve 1073. Yeah. There are plenty of copies of it that if you run them in kind of a safe level range, I find that they don't sound that different from the real thing. But once you start to push them, which of That's course is thing, what yeah. we do with guitar amps anyway. And it's... what you should be doing with a 1073 as well or, or whatever, you know, because yeah. uh, that, that was a big part of the sound, people getting the levels wrong and getting a bit more drive out of them on the vocals. It adds great character, doesn't it? So, But with the, the real ones that are designed with the right components, and yeah. I think that's why even, you know, if you look at the cost of a 40-track Neve desk back in the 70s, yeah, it, by modern standards, I think it was three or four thousand pounds per channel. Yeah. Because they were taking the time like you to tune everything. Yes. Whereas, yeah. like, um, people have asked, like, uh, couldn't even make a reissue of the desk, and they've just said, we, we couldn't afford it. Yeah. And I think the biggest cost for them is manpower, of having the experts sit there and tune every channel. 
Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. The human ear is the best thing. And you've also got to work, if, if you're involved in playing guitar, study a little bit of sound engineering too. Obviously you have and I have. And That's, that's another thing that we should mention is that Will was a trained sound engineer as well. Well, yeah, not... Uh, didn't do a huge amount of it, but uh, still not as much as you anyway, but it's still always been a hobby my whole life. And uh, But it's enough that you've developed the ear for it. You that's know what you're thing. listening for. And also, you, you said about my amps cutting through. that I try and design them to cut through in a mix and work in a mix because, I mean, th- that's been part of my whole problem with the whole t- tonal journey I went on before I started making these amps was... You know, sometimes I could get a great sound playing on my own and then I'd go and play with the band and it'd disappear. I'd be, where's all that bass gone that I thought was amazing? And So still quite, this is a bit like a, a, a an old tweed amp, uh, but with way more dynamics and touch responsiveness, because uh, I'll say that again, but with way more dynamics and touch responsiveness, because the old tweeds were really compressed and they didn't um, really react to what you do on the guitar. They all, I mean, they were lovely amps and I love them, but the, part of the idea of this is it's really responsive to what you do and how you play. So even if I turn up the uh, volume a bit more, You know, so just by how I'm hitting it, it'll clean up or distort a lot by ha- how hard you hit it. But um, so I go to the middle position um, out of phase, turn them back down to about seven each. You're yeah, quite a vintage sound, isn't it? It is a very vintage sound. And um, that's part of it, but, um, you know, quite good for blue. Start turning the volume up a little bit on the middle. You know, it'll go to kind of ZZ top level. Well, you know, it'll do a good woman tone. Control, but yeah, that's so. it's so interesting that a, a lot of the amps I've tried over the years, I try and get that kind of tone, and it just sounds woolly. Yes. So I think the reaction between the pickups and the electronics and the amps front end, it really is the key. But yeah, yeah, it's yeah. mad. Yeah, that yeah. sounds great. <laughs> Let's see how this thing sounds. Like. Yeah, great classic rock sound. You wouldn't yeah. get that out of a normal tweet, though, would you? No. <laughs> So, wow. It, it may be a little too bitey in the upper mid, that guitar yeah. with that setup. But I mean, obviously it's got the controls at the back, so I could... So if you were to wind a bit of tone off on that, would yeah. that do it? I think that's just biting nice there, isn't it? One thing Sounds this great. Les Paul can do is it can coil tap. Ah, brilliant. So, do you want to try the neck pickup? Um, it's push-push. 
So you just give them a tap. Okay, so I'll, I'll try normal neck, okay? Wow, <laughs> that wasn't a feedback note, that was a natural... There was a bit of feedback in there as well, but yeah, but it's... It's, that, uh, it's on that blooming point. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Very Parisian walkways, <laughs> kind yeah, of, yeah. that whole kind of thing. It really is based on just natural power amp feedback, I guess. Well, it, the, the whole yeah, that well, there's feedback going on inside the amp, if you like. Right. Okay. So that's part of what gives it the sustain, and that's when you talk about oscillation. Feedback is oscillation. So that's what I was talking about earlier with yes. that. But it's not actually what you're playing on the guitar that's feeding back. It's kind of frequencies you can't hear, but then they are then vibrating other bits back to keep the note going. Mm. It's that, a bit of a strange that, one. It so, makes uh, sense, but I'm, I'm taking my hands off the guitar here. It's still fully open in terms of volume. Yeah. No feedback. No. So it's not just wailing, screaming preamp feedback. No, it's not. But if I grab the guitar and play that B again, Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. It's you know, quite a classic, clean sound. You know, it'll go cleaner again if I back off the volume just a bit. So I'll go uh, for the middle pickup. for a bit more gain to show where... Uh... Yeah, push a bit more gain on the amp itself. Yes. There's almost that collapsing-y kind of uh, mid-push sound. These are classic pickups, you know, just vintage style hand-wound pickups, so mm. they're not, they're heavy form VAR style, I don't know if you, for people who know what that means, but... People at home will know more than I. <laughs> that, that means that they're like the real vintage style ones with quite a scooped sound, but it, it puts, the amp puts the mids back in, you know. Something that's just come to mind with that tone and uh, that amp is, Pedals, something we briefly talked about last time I saw you, that an amp like this takes pedals, not just well, but it really does a lot more yes. than a lot of other amps would. Yeah, if you went with a pedal, if you were a touring musician and you just went on tour with your guitars and pedal board, and then this was your back line and you tried to play it with all the same settings, you'd be totally messed up. That's the only bad side because right. you have to set them very differently. You know, you imagine the normal overdrive or a boost you're putting on, it's gonna be exaggerated with this thing. So mm. you could end up with a, an awful sound <laughs> because of it, so. Uh... So it's just something to keep in mind that you've got to tune your pedals to the amp in this case. Yeah, yeah, and um, you know, you can do uh, a lot more on the pedal with a much m milder setting with mm. an amp like this than you can with, uh, with another more traditional amp. <laughs> and on that note, check out Will's Full Systems on filthyamplification.com. I think we'll have to leave it there because otherwise <laughs> people will just fall asleep because not, not because it's not interesting, <laughs> but because we've been yeah. talking for quite a long time. Yeah.
So yeah, well, thank you very much. And we'll do some more filming for some other pieces of content, uh, which you'll be able to check out when we finally release this British audio documentary. Brilliant, that'd be great. And yeah, stay tuned for more videos on the channel and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Bye. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this, feel free to check out our other videos as you can find here or check out our Facebook and Twitter or our Patreon page, which helps us to make more videos like this. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.